If you're wondering whether you should go for a mini Kelly versus a mini Bolide, which one to get, which one is more worth it, I'm glad that I don't have to make that decision because I'm glad that I own both. But I can tell you there's a huge difference between these two bags, even though they look quite similar in stature. Except the Mini Kelly costs 25 to 30K in the resale market. And even if you were to buy it in the retail, you would have to spend that much money anyway because the pre-spend on a Mini Kelly, at least in Vancouver, is anywhere between 3 to 1 to 4 to 1. Whereas the Mini Bolide is about 8, 7k USD and even the retail space is about the same, a little less maybe. You're looking at a 30k bag versus an 8k bag so huge difference there. So yeah in this video I'm gonna do a pretty thorough comparison of the two bags. I'm gonna talk about the pre-spend a little bit, the resale value, the pros and cons and what I like about each of them and dislike about each of them and at the end of the video, hopefully it will help you decide whether this is a better bag for you or this or both. I will be styling them in a variety of outfits. There's a total of nine pieces, five of which are outerwear. I'll start off with this really cute round neck wool jacket, a great neutral camel color short coat and it has pockets. Buttons are really really gorgeous and classic. Super easy to layer on top of a casual outfit or you can also layer it on top of a more dressy outfit. This is one of my favorite piece. I love the color on this one. Kind of see the color palettes that I'm going for this season. Definitely all in the earth tones. Before I completely forget to tell you, all of these pieces are from Esdeer. So thank you so much to Esdeer for letting me show you their newest fall collection. This is the second time that I'm working with Esdeer. And what I love about them is that their designs are very kind of European French elegance. Um, with a very, very affordable price tag. Even though these wool coats or jackets are 50% wool, they're very soft for what they are and they have a beautiful drape. This one is definitely a little bit more oversized. I love that it's slightly more boxy so that you can definitely layer on the inside on a colder day. It's the kind of wool that is still great for transitional weather but a little bit thinner than your very heavy wool definitely warm enough for even the winter months i think especially if it's not too too cold this is another great neutral that goes so well with the Hermes color gold one of those very neutral color that is not black so it's not boring I know a lot of people think black is boring. I mean, I love black, but if you're not into black and you love your earthy tones, this is gorgeous. Um, it's a long coat and it's belted, which is so versatile. I hope you can see the texture of it. It's got this nice brush feel. It definitely feels premium and it's a gorgeous, gorgeous jacket. The color is so nice. I know, the color red is all the rage. It also happens to be my favorite color, which is great because there's a lot of red and burgundies available this season, which is the great time to add to your wardrobe. With this design, I love the sleeves and of course the pop of color. This coat in particular is more fitted, so I will tell you in advance, I did get it in a size small. It does fit me, but it is definitely a lot more fitted than the green one that I just showed you. So if you're in between size, definitely go a size up. That's my opinion. Um, it's more fitted right around the shoulders and also the armpit area. Oh my goodness, guys. I... I'm so excited to show you. It's a three-in-one design in my opinion. So it's kind of a two-piece coat. And by the way, this is a cashmere blend, which is so soft. This is even softer than the other two coats. It's obviously a little bit more premium than the other two. So you've got this shorter jacket on top. So this jacket has this really awesome collar and really cute sleeves and it's super cropped and it's very very soft i hope i hope you can see the texture of it and it's this gorgeous beige color that literally is so neutral goes with everything and you can wear this jacket alone this inside i guess vest is really cool because it's got this mesh sleeve so anytime you have like a very beautiful gown and maybe it's sleeveless 
and you wear this as part of your coat let's say you arrive indoors and you get a little hot you could just remove the top layer which is this jacket right here and still keep the vest and the sleeves uh, the mesh sleeves as part of your outfit or of course you can wear all three which is so cool i thought that the design was ingenious i'm pretty sure dior has a jacket like that where it's like three in one you can kind of separate them or wear them together and it's so so versatile oversized blazer what i love about this there's two reasons First is that it really reminds me of the Balmain jacket, but with not the Balmain price tag. I love that these buttons um, even looked apart, but they're not. It's not a Balmain blazer, it's just another blazer, another houndstooth blazer. I'm not quite like the athleisure person either, but I also like to be a little bit more comfortable these days. So I love blazers for that reason. I just throw them on on top of like a little tank top and jeans. Reason number two, it's actually green and white. I don't know if you can see it. I From afar, I couldn't even tell even on the picture, but once you get it, in person and it's so subtle black and white is really awesome it's classic but this is so much brighter and something so different and i love that about this jacket i think it's a cool oversized jacket another blazer to my arsenal of blazers that i already own two more outfits i want to talk about so of course the shirt that i'm wearing is a cashmere shirt it's really really soft really really soft cashmere and it pairs so well with these jeans with jeans you can never have enough <laughs> And that's the thing with me. I'm always after the next best pair because they always fit a little different. Mom's jeans vibe, but with this really graceful flow without any wrinkles. I got everything in size small this time, so everything fits to a T. But with these jeans especially, because the material is so stretchy, it's so forgiving. Sometimes you might even need a belt. This is a little mock neck top made of a really beautiful polyester knit. And it's got this like lace material here. Um, these sleeves are also kind of like that bracelet sleeve, slightly shorter, which is perfect for showcasing your bracelets. Last but not least, we've got this skirt again because last time I got it in size medium. For some reason, they sent me a size medium. It was too big. So this time I got it in the right size. So it's really the same skirt. It has pockets. It's fully lined and it's a really really gorgeous mesh material love this sort of like black and gray mesh design so i'm gonna have every single piece linked down below in the description box and you can use my coupon code amy22 to save 22 percent at checkout you can save up to 35 percent the more you buy the more you save and there's different coupon codes in different tiers and if you shop their clearance section you can even save 50 percent back to the review let me give you some dimensions first they're quite similar but they are still a little bit different so just as a first visual you can see from the bottom that the mini kelly is longer but the mini bolide is wider they both have feet their feet are slightly different make so the mini bolide has more of that rounded stub super cute i love these feet by the way they're really really nice quality and feels so nice to the touch whereas the mini kelly has this kind of cut off nub so it's very pretty much like all the kelly's have this kind of feet just a bigger size on the regular kelly's the mini bullet is slightly taller with the handle and even the bag itself it is also taller and you can see kind of their girth here for the mini bolide, the length is about 7 inches or 18 centimeter, with the width at 3 inches or 7.5 centimeter, and the height of the bag is 5.5 inches or 14 centimeter. And the bag drop from the highest point all the way to the top of the bag, the bag drop is 20 inches. So approximately 51 centimeter drop. The actual length of this strap 
on the mini Bolide is 105 centimeters. So it's actually a little bit longer than the mini Kelly. Let's start with the backdrop first since we just finished with that. So the backdrop from like at the top of the bag all the way to here is about 19 inches. So it's an inch shorter. By the way, just as a visual comparison, both of these straps, they have the exact same clasp. In fact, they would be the exact same strap if they were the same length, but um, they are obviously not because yeah, this is 98, this is 105. With the bag itself at the bottom right here, it's seven and a half inches long. So it's slightly, ever so slightly longer than this. Uh, except of course we all know that it tapers up, right? So it's quite short here. Same with the mini bolide, except the mini bolide um, tapers a little bit less. This one definitely tapers a bit more. So the top of the bag is about six and a half inches. So it's about 16 and a half centimeters. The width is about two and a half inches or six centimeters. And the height of the bag from here to here is about five inches or 12.5 centimeters. The mini bully also kind of narrows up a little bit at up top. Uh, once you open up the zippers, it kind of frees up the space. And we're going to see that in the what's in my bag. My mini bolide is in Chevre Misor. So it's in a goat skin. And as you can tell, the goat skin, it has a slight sheen. But in real life, it's still pretty matte, but it does have that very subtle sheen. It just kind of reflects light a little bit. So it's very, very beautiful. Chevre is also a full grain leather and it's not super rigid as you can tell. You can definitely press in it. It's not very thick. It's just kind of like that nice um, delicate but also strong leather at the same time. It's very hard to describe. It's a beautiful, beautiful leather. Ever since I got this bag, this is my first bag in Chevre. Misa, I fell in love with goat skin. It's such a beautiful leather. Typically with mini bow leads, it usually comes in Evercolor or Chev or Epsom. I think those are the main three. I think it definitely comes in Evercolor more often. So you can see I have a charm right here. This is a birdie charm. It does not come with the bag. You have to buy this separately. But I do have it on my mini bow lead and I'll explain why because with the charm itself, I find that it really complements the mini bully because otherwise the bag itself is really, really plain. It just looks like kind of like a cute Alma. It's very nice, but it's very plain. It has very minimal hardware, if at all. Like if you don't have the straps on, you're not even going to see that much hardware except the zipper. And that's it. It's just really, really plain and under the radar prices in the consignment market right now resells the mini bolide at around eight to seven thousand us dollars which is very close to the retail price it's definitely not a one to one two to one type of spend because it's not a quota bag you can technically walk into a store and ask if they have stock i think depending on the store they may or may not sell it to you because usually you still have to have some sort of profile shopping history with the store especially because the mini sizes of anything they're really really hard to come by so usually the essays will try to keep it and get it for their clients versus any walk-ins but you never know you don't ask you don't get pros and cons so i can tell you that uh, one of the main pros that you're going to see, especially in the what fits in my bag portion, is that the mini Bolli fits a lot more. A lot more compared to the mini Kelly, even though they both have a similar stature. Another thing that I love about the mini Bolli is that it's so easy to access this bag. Once it's opened, you have a huge kind of opening really easy to kind of reach and grab and you can see everything at a glance as we saw earlier another pro is that the strap is much longer on the mini bow lead it's not super long but i think this is an average length that will suit most body types it's 105 centimeter length so this strap really makes the bag sit on my hips 
properly versus the mini Kelly kind of sits above my hip. Another thing that I love about the mini Bolide, especially if you don't have any sort of charm or anything, is that this bag is so understated. It definitely is more quiet luxury. It's a beautiful bag, it's an expensive bag, it's a really well-made bag, but if you don't know the brand, you're not gonna be able to tell that this bag costs $8,000. Now, there are cons, both bags have pros and cons. With the Mini Bolide, even though it's not a quarter bag, but it's still really expensive. Another con is that even though it's not a quarter bag, it's still pretty hard to get. The demand on mini bags in general, they're so high that most of the time the store essays will try to keep it for their own clients. So very rarely will you be able to walk in and just buy one. I mean, it happens, but it's really rare. Some people might find it really, really plain and not see the value in paying that much money for this bag. So in order to make it less plain, which is why I kind of keep this little charm here pretty much all the time because well it goes well with the bag but also it kind of jazzes up the bag and makes it a little bit less plain and last but not least this bag doesn't age so well it's probably better on this leather this is the chevre and if you have an Epsom one, it's probably okay. But the Evercolor, which is the most predominant leather that this size bag or this mini bolide comes in, it tends to really crease around here. And Evercolor in general is a leather that already looks aged when it's brand new. So it tends to not age very well. In general, if you see a lot of the mini bolides in the wild or in the consignment, uh, market it's usually looking a little bit used up and beat up even when they're brand new I'm sure a lot of people already know a lot about the mini Kelly but we'll still go over everything very thoroughly so the mini Kelly typically at least right now in North America in consignment you will find the prices between 25k to 30k USD even if you were to go to a private reseller they're still selling 25 to 23k it's still pretty up there especially if it's brand new from store with everything receipt packaging uh, stickers on and it's literally brand new from that same year there's no doubt that the mini Kelly at least in the present day is a quota bag that pretty much explains why the resale market sells these bags these mini bags at 20 30k because that's how much you have to spend in store in terms of pre-spend to get an offer like this so typically in vancouver for example the pre-spend for a mini Kelly is anywhere between three to one, four to one. Some people even say five to one just to get a mini Kelly. So that is insane. And that is the reason why um, the resale market resells these bags at such a high premium. Let's start with the pros. It's a Kelly. <laughs> so that is a pro because anytime it says Kelly on anything, even though it's a Kelly to go or a Kelly pochette, Kelly whatever, it's just gonna add that bump of a premium and status and just like overall kind of, you know, kind of like that uh, timeless significance because anytime you hear classic flap or Birkin, that's just gonna have that status to it. I, I don't know how else to explain it. It's a Kelly. Another pro that I love about the mini Kelly, but it also goes with any size Kelly, but especially the mini Kelly is that um, it has hardware. And the hardware is not insignificant, even though the hardware is a lot smaller compared to the regular size Kelly, but just by having hardware on this bag versus this bag, which is very plain, gives it another kind of bling and kind of, I don't know how else to explain it. Sometimes your outfit just needs that extra bling and the hardware will do that for you. Uh, sometimes I don't find that I did get enough of that in the mini bolid and that's okay because sometimes I want a really quiet bag but when I go for the mini Kelly I sometimes want that kind of loud hardware another pro about the mini Kelly is that it's a superb handbag or clutch size bag for events 
I mean, it's a bag that you can go from day to night, but especially because of the size, the shape, the stature, and just the way it carries itself, and maybe just the significance of a Kelly bag, it just really kind of screams elegance and something that you can just sort of like go to a black tie or a really fancy event. And that's something that I feel like the, the Mini Kelly really gives you and not necessarily other bags. I feel like because it's small on top of that, it really has that quality to it. And last but not least, of course, the Mini Kelly, it really retains its resale value. Even a used Mini Kelly will still resell and fetch 20K USD. It's kind of insane. And that is a beautiful thing. Also a bad thing because if you're trying to buy one and you don't have a relationship with any store, then you know, it's an expensive bag to get. Another con is that most of the time, the Mini Kelly is pretty much so, so hard to get. It's, it almost feels like it's impossible to get. That's how it feels. It's not impossible to get, but that's how it feels sometimes. It's very, very rare that you would get your first offer as a Mini Kelly. It's rare, it's not impossible, it's just quite rare. Typically, and in my case as well, you've had to be a third year client to be able to get a Mini Kelly. It's like I said, it's just one of those bags that everyone wants one. And so in order for them to kind of try to cater to everyone and make it fair, they try to just offer it to the most loyal clients who's been shopping with the house for the longest time. And that is why it feels impossible to get one because it's that hard and it feels that hard to get one. It actually fits a lot less than most mini bags. I will say it's it sometimes feels pretty useless even though we don't care. I mean, it, it's still a con, right? Like it it just is, is a struggle to fit things sometimes, especially if you have a slightly bigger phone. Even when you have a mini phone, in my case, I have this tiny little mini 13. It's still not a seamless in and out of the bag. It's still pretty hard to get in and out of it. And of course, last but not least, the strap. Everybody complains about the strap drop of the Mini Kelly because even though I'm pretty slim and I'm not super tall, it still sits pretty high up on me. And so for most people, it will be a super short strap, especially if you're a guy. Okay, let's do a what's in my bag comparison. So I have a lot of different organizers for different bags, but currently I am a big fan of these silky organizers. They tend to slide items in and out of them very nicely. So you can see how my phone is just sliding on this material versus the original felt materials. They tend to just have more of a grip and friction. So I love that the silky ones have more of that premium feel. I also always order them in the thinner felt, so the 1.2 millimeter felt from Zumoni, and you can use my coupon code to save another 20% off on top of their current sale that's happening right now, I think. In any case, here is the, the way it looks inside my Kelly with the organizer in there. So as you can see, it's not like it's bulging or anything, but th over time, right, the material can create a little bit of a bump on your material, on your leather, and you don't want that to be left inside for storage. But it's great to have while you're using it. I will not recommend storing your organizer in it while you have the bag in storage because typically I will close up everything over time, depending on how long you don't use the bag, it will create those unnecessary creases. And that's the last thing you want to see. And that is because these bags are so small to begin with, especially the mini bolide. It's even less structured. I mean, it's structured, but the leather is very soft. This very subtle bulge, I don't know if you can tell from the camera. Maybe you cannot because it's still quite seamless right now. There's nothing in it, but I think you can. There's a subtle, very subtle bulge here. Like I said, it's not gonna happen overnight. It's not gonna happen while you use the bag. It's gonna happen if you keep it inside for a long period of time. That's the reason why I store the mini bags, Hermes bags, mini size bags, without their organizers because they're just too tight. Birkin 25, Kelly 25, different story because those 
are bigger bags and I feel like the organizers don't push out on the bag and if they do then definitely don't leave them in there but for my organizers they don't push out on the leather but for the mini size they do because they're so tight already so that's my tip so I have a mini iPhone 13 we'll go ahead and put it in there card holder Actually, I will move the card holder in front of it because the phone is longer, so I just want to put it more in the middle. My six key holder, so it's got my keys in there. Bastia. I will also add my uh, hand sanitizer. The Boli, what I love about it is that if you're not going to zip it up, and even if you do, it will fit a lot more than your mini kelly because even on top you can technically fit sunglasses see you can still close it okay so there's a slight tiny bulge here but very very little um like it's not looking ugly at all it's really smooth still so that's what i love about the mini bully and if you didn't have the organizer inside you might even feel like you have slightly just ever so slightly more space because of course any material inside is is still taking up a little bit of space right but this organizer is already thin enough and i feel more comfortable having inside just to protect the lining but yeah it's a lot of things we'll just do our best so phone card holder clay six keys it's already getting full you see so i cannot put the bastia in there but i can there is space for my sanitizer so this could easily be a lipstick as well it will just be standing up and um that's pretty much it guys you uh really like it you can't even really close the bag because it will you literally have to like fold this in and it will close really awkwardly that's also why i tend to use the mini kelly open because even if you reach your hands in there like what are you gonna grab it's so hard to grab anything so i don't even close my bags although because of that reason since i'm not closing my bags you can technically also leave your sunglasses in there but as you can see like it's it's full right it's taking up all the space there is definitely no room for this bastia i was still able to close this bag whereas this bag there's no way i can close it it's really really full so you can see that this bag fits way 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 more especially if you love to have your bags kind of looking prim and proper closed um you have to sacrifice a few things all in all these two bags they're similar but still very very different they have very different price points the process and time and length and money invested to get them is very different their capacity is also absolutely different their visual quality is also different this one is definitely more quiet luxury this one is definitely you know it's not loud by any means but it's you can recognize a kelly i think from a mile away so if you ask me which one should you get if you don't care about the whole like you know getting the holy grail status bag the mini bullied is in, in every way other than being loud it excels it fits more it has a better strap length um it still has all the beautiful craftsmanship of Hermes. The interior of both bags, by the way, I never talked about it, but they both have a slip pocket inside, which is pretty useless in my opinion because uh, the bag already is so tiny. What are you going to slip in there? A parking stub? That's it. I'm just glad I have both. Sometimes it's nice to give the Kellys a break, the Quota bags a break so that I can be a little bit more carefree knowing that this didn't cost me as big of a fortune to get this uh, so I can be a bit more carefree using this in a way uh, if I can only have one bag I would still want to have the Kelly more but that has more to do with 
just the aesthetic rather than the functional aspect of it because functionally speaking the mini bow lead is still superior let me know what your thoughts are on both the mini bow lead and the mini kelly which one would you get and um if you're after one what color are you after leather i absolutely love both i would love to get more colors of the mini bow lead lighter colors a pop of color same with the mini kelly i would love to get a gray and then I would love to get more colors as well. Just these bags are so versatile in their own ways. The petiteness of them, they just work so well for me that I don't mind getting more. Of course, they cost a lot and it's a journey to get them, but I love them so much. Let me know what you think in the comment section. If you're not subscribed to my channel already, I would love for you to subscribe. I would love to have you back. Like you see here, we do a lot of reviews, mainly Chanel, Hermes, lots of ready to wear. I'll link some related videos on the screen and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye!